Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili and thank you for watching. This week on the county's Spanish language radio show, we had Marisela Cordova of our Transportation Department and Purple Line Program Manager as a guest. We talked about the construction process that begins in January in downtown Silver Spring, which will take several months and will impact vehicular, pedestrian, and cyclist traffic in the area. We're about to start a very exciting piece of the project. Um, it's also one of the most complex ones. So a lot of impacts from the construction are going to start in, uh, they're happening, but they're gonna get worse in, uh, in January. So we have to stay alert and stay informed and pay attention to our surroundings at all times for sure. The Purple Line is a 16 mile light rail system that will connect downtown Bethesda in Montgomery County with New Carlton in Prince George's County. This east-west line is expected to carry passengers from one end on the route to the other in about 40 minutes. The Purple Line will have 11 stops in Montgomery and the project is expected to be operational in Prince George's by the end of 2022. This system will be fully operational by the end of 2023. For more information, visit purplelinemd.com. Executive Mark Elrich will be hosting the last budget forum to seek input from residents about the fiscal year 2021 operating budget priorities. It will take place on Monday, December 9th at 1.30 p.m. at Leisure World. These forums allow residents to get information about the priorities taken into consideration while preparing the budget and also allows them to give input directly to the county executive. For more information, go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. County Executive Mark Elridge and County Council Vice President Sidney Katz are invited local business owners to attend and participate in a Ford Business Charette as part of the benchmarking to be the best for business initiative. The next Ford Business Charette will take place from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. on Monday, December 9th at the Wheaton Community Recreation Center. For more information, visit the Ford Business webpage. 400,000 households in the county will be receiving a postcard in the next few days. The Department of Environmental Protection wants county residents to be aware of a new pesticide law that restricts the use of certain pesticides on lawns, playgrounds, mulched recreation areas, and child care facilities. All the residents are going to be getting um, a mailer here now. It's, it's come at me and I've gotten it yet. And it's going to help you uh, understand what you're allowed to put on your lawns. Uh, going forward, uh, the objective is to reduce the amount of pesticides being applied to lawns in the county, and it will give you the do's and don'ts. Restrictions do not apply to control tree and household pests or biting insects. For a full explanation of exemptions and for more information about the pesticide law, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash lawns. During his monthly Montgomery County Public Schools press conference, MCPS Superintendent Dr. Jack Smith explained the purpose of the district-wide boundary analysis. The school system, as everyone knows, is engaged in a district-wide boundary analysis. The key word there is analysis. It's a study. The study uh, conversation started last January. Uh, the board worked through the spring and summer and put out a request for proposals. And WXY Incorporated was the vendor that was identified to work on behalf of Montgomery County Public Schools. And they started work in the early fall, right when school began. And they've launched the first phase of the district-wide boundary analysis. This work will go on the rest of this winter and through the spring. And a report will come back to June. Uh, come back to the board in June. A report will come back. WXY will analyze various data points such as school facility utilization and capacity, student demographics, school assignments, and travel patterns. They're going to look at a lot of things. You can find all sorts of information on our website about this. What they will not do, what they will not do is make recommendations about changing the 
attendance areas, the boundaries of schools, or decide who's enrolled in what school. They will not do that. That work then will be used in the future by the board as they see relevance and usefulness in the work. And they will look at where we can use the information that comes from the analysis and utilization in expanding diversity and creating better geographic patterns, better travel patterns. And remember one of the factors is sustainability of enrollment. In other words, if you are moved you know, if you were moved last year in a boundary uh, study and redistricted, then the district has made a commitment and policy that that won't happen to you again during your experience in that particular school. Coming up on County Report this week, the city of Rockville's mayor and newly elected council are sworn into office. And get ready for a favorite holiday tradition. Winter lights have gone up in Gaithersburg. Stay with us, County Report this week. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Adam Ortiz here talking to you about how to gift outside of the box this holiday season. So there's a lot of things that we can do to give to our loved ones while giving back to the environment. So one way is to give the gift of energy savings. So a new air filter or LED bulb, stuff that you can pick up from your local home improvement store can go a long way. Also using reusable materials as gifts, such as this water bottle or this reusable bag are a way to uh, save our environment and look cool while doing it. Also, if we have to buy stuff, there's a lot of resources right here in our county. So from the Agricultural Reserve, there's lots of fruits and craft beer and wines and things that we can buy, as well as arts and crafts from around the area. We can also give the gift of experiences, so a gift certificate for a dance class, a massage, or yoga can go a long way while providing a low carbon footprint. So this holiday season, as we give, let's not be a screw to the environment. These ideas and more are available on our website, and we're wishing you a very happy and safe holiday season. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigili. A local resource fair helped several people who experienced homelessness throughout the county. My MC Media's Jordan Lindsay spoke with an attendee and she has more. This is Stacy Sloan. She says she's been homeless since October. I think it can happen to just about anybody, um, especially when you have an altercation with a family member that I was staying with. I was staying with my father and and being put in jail. That's why on Thursday she attended the Nadine Khan Memorial Homeless Resource Day in Gaithersburg. Because I really don't have, you know, my stuff and, um, you know, to hopefully get the, the food stamps again. And well, Homeless Resource Day is usually an annual event and it's a wonderful opportunity for the community of Montgomery County to get together service providers and nonprofit organizations to work with people who um, are homeless in our community. There were free haircuts and manicures and more than 65 organizations that offered a range of resources including free medical screenings, financial counseling, and social services. About 400 volunteers help attendees navigate all that there was to offer. There's other things like uh, food and clothing here. And it's just all together in one place. Something like this goes a long way for those in need throughout the county. It lets people who need resources know how, where they can receive the resources. And of course it involves many families and involves people who are, who are working but, but in many cases can't make ends meet. And this gives them the, the, the filling in the gap for what they need. It does affect people right in our community, and they're people that are just like me. They're one paycheck away from homelessness, or maybe someone in their family got sick and they weren't able to pay their rent. So we think that it's a um, issue that's far removed from us, but it's, it's not. It's really here in our community, affecting people that we probably know. It's not fun, and, um, but I'm glad you know, that this service is available. Reporting in Gaithersburg, Jordan Lindsay for County Report this week. If you have donated to Heroes United, thinking you were helping a volunteer firefighter department, you were the victim of deceptive telemarketing from a fictitious business, and the county's Office of Consumer Protection wants residents to know that you're due a reimbursement of your full donation. Turns out Heroes United is a political action committee 
doing business as Volunteer Firefighters Association, collecting millions nationwide. Well, Consumer Protection has entered into a settlement agreement with the organization and scammed residents are to receive refunds. For more information, call the Office of Consumer Protection at 240-777-3636. Rockville's 66th mayor and council is officially sworn in in serving the city. Rockville 11's Craig Buchanan brings you their thoughts from Rockville's inauguration ceremony. After a historic and successful vote by mail election, the 66th Rockville mayor and council were sworn in on November 17th, 2019. For the next four years, we are fortunate to be represented by a pleasantly diverse group of intelligent, talented, dedicated, and compassionate individuals. Mayor Bridget Donald Newton is optimistic about her next four years of service. I think it's going to be um, a very great dynamic that the city hasn't seen in a long time with everybody having done their homework and bringing creative solutions forward. I'm really, really excited. Council members, both seasoned and new, also express enthusiasm about their roles in shaping Rockville's future. I am honored to serve, and today is a day of fresh beginnings and of coming together to collaborate to support this great city of Rockville. Today is another occasion to renew, become reinvigorated, and to do the people's work on behalf of the residents, businesses, and nonprofits that are in the city of Rockville. I'm very thankful for all the people in the community that put their trust in me. And I do hope to make everybody proud and working on behalf of all people here in Rockville. Well, it feels very good. I've been here before, and the two new members, Monique Ashton and David Miles, they bring a lot to the table, so I'm looking very much forward to that. With this new council beside me, I see a brand new ending for many of the opportunities on our incredible city's horizon. And friends, as we take this first step together, let us bring our best selves, our childlike acceptance, our open minds, and our willingness to see the possibilities, so that together we will serve the people who elected us as the 2019 City of Rockville Mayor and Council. Thank you. For County Report this week, I'm Craig Buchanan. The City of Gaithersburg's Winter Lights Festival is celebrating its 24th spectacular year. Crews started putting up the lights back in October at Great Seneca State Park. As you drive through a three and a half mile festival, you will discover lights strung high in the trees and on floating docks in the water. More than 450 illuminated displays that light up the night in themes areas include winter woods, Teddy Bear Land, Victorian Village, the North Pole, and more. The park is located on Clopper Road. For admission fees and hours of operation, visit GaithersburgMD.gov. And now it's time to meet our Pet of the Week. This week, we want to introduce you to Bo, who is an excitable, goofy, five-year-old Mastiff mix with a heart as big as his head. He likes the company of other dogs and would be more than happy to have a plate made at his new forever home. He would be a great addition to any family with older children or adults. Bo would love to meet you and be part of your family. If you're interested in Bo, you can visit the shelter's website at montgomerycountymd.gov ASD to learn about the adoption process. And don't forget to follow Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at MCASAC. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember, you can find more information about Montgomery County at montgomerycountymd.gov or follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.